Okay, I have a simple but very cool card effect that uses some brand new ideas I've discovered recently. So as you can see, I have a full deck of cards here and the cards are well mixed with various values, suits, and colors. Okay, had a hard time showing everything because it's, it's so many cards. Okay, so what we need for this is we need uh, two groups of eight and two groups of 16. Now I can deal those out in whatever order you would like. Would you like a group of eight first or 16? Eight, okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How about now? A group of 16? Okay, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. How about now? 16 again? Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then we need another group of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and that leaves us, what, 4 cards left over, which makes sense. Okay, so what we're going to do with each of these is we're going to uh, mix them uh, with your input here. Okay, so we have a six, a two packets of 16 over here, and then I guess I can move these up here. I'm not making good use of the pad here. And then two of uh, packets of eight. Okay, um, in fact, maybe I'll slide these off just so we can work in the middle. That's where we'll kind of mix things. Okay, so which one would you like me to mix first? Top left, okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a very special kind of um, dealing. It's dealing out into a triangle. And for some reason, doing this achieves some pretty miraculous results. Okay, now I'm gonna stack these, uh, but you can tell me where I start the stacking. Want up here, here, or here. You want down in the bottom? Okay, so we'll go ahead and go a counterclockwise. That would be just fine. Uh, would you like me to do another one of those or not? No? Okay. Now, just know when you go to perform this, you can do as many of those as you like, actually. Um, should we do a 16 now? Okay. So we're just dealing out into a triangle pattern here. Okay. And then where would you like me to start, you know, picking up the cards to stack them? Top left. Okay. So maybe to mix things up, we'll stack in counterclock or clockwise now. The last one, I guess, was counterclockwise, if I remember correctly. <laughs> uh, which one would you like? Uh, you want the packet of eight down here. Okay, where would you like me to start, you know, uh, picking up cards? Over here. Okay, and so why don't we go uh, counterclockwise again, just to mix things up. And then, let's see, we haven't mixed this one yet. Oh, and then, by the way, we can mix any of these as many times as you like in the way that I'm doing right here. You, you truly can. That's the crazy thing. Um, you want to start at the bottom. Okay, so we'll go clockwise. Change things up a little bit there. Okay, uh, would you like me to mix any more of these? The bottom left. Okay, I'll do that one again. Where would you like me to start the stacking? Top right. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of go in counterclockwise order. That'd be just fine. Okay, well, you can do as many of those as you like. Okay, just know that. So now what we're going to do, um, which, and it always ends up with a just inexplicable result here, but I'm going to deal out uh, each of these into uh, two piles, just, you know, equal, equal size piles. Okay, and then, of course, these piles over here are gonna be uh, twice as large, <laughs> right? There you go, we had twice as many cards. Uh, same thing here. Okay, so think about how we have arrived at these uh, different piles, okay? So uh, we have a pi piles of four over here, uh, piles of eight over here, and then think about the uh, dealing that we did with the triangle deal, and knowing that you could have asked for the triangle deal to be done multiple times on any one packet, or just once, or no times, actually, if you, if you didn't. You, you could have chosen to not deal it at all. I guess I should have mentioned that to you. Uh, we didn't actually have to deal into a triangle. So when you go to do it, maybe give the spectator that option. It won't harm anything. Okay, so how would I know if something highly unlikely has happened? Well, I think the only way to know that is to take a look at the cards here, okay? So let's take a look at these right here. This is a, oh, I'm going off, I'm sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know if you see anything interesting about those. I'll try to stay in camera view this time. Uh, anything interesting so far? We really are going to have a hard time fitting these. Uh, okay, that fits, I think. OK, 
Okay, well, is there anything here that you would associate a very small probability, like the chance of that happening by chance alone is extremely small. Uh, what do you think? Do you see anything interesting there? Um, so why don't we do out these? Uh, maybe I'll go uh, left to, sorry, left to right, because I think we're going to run out of room otherwise. Okay, and try to keep it camera view. Okay, so if you thought you saw something over there, do you see that same something over here? Okay, um, let's see, maybe I'll put that there temporarily. Uh, oh boy, I'm not sure if we're going to get all these fitting here. These I guess I can just uh, fan out to show you. Okay, so what's common? You know, what, what's going on here that really <laughs> could not easily happen by chance alone unless there's some kind of, I don't know, magical influence or some kind of force of the universe that's leading to a certain outcome? What do you notice here? These are all even valued. Those are all odd. These are all odd valued cards. These are all even. Those are all even. Uh, queen's 12. Those are all odd, these are all even, and these are all odd. I sure hope you can explain to me how in heaven's name we were able to do that, okay? With all of the options the spectators given to just mix up these cards beyond the knowledge of anyone. Okay, so quickly, how does this work? Uh, well, if you do what I did, <laughs> oh, well, I have to tell you how it was set up. Uh, you might have a guess. You might have a pretty good educated guess uh, what what the structure was. So all I did was I had the cards alternating even odd all the way through. And if you show the cards fast enough, I don't know if anyone's going to notice that or pay attention. Uh, the thing to do there is if you're concerned about them noticing something, you draw their attention away from that. So you can say, uh, do you agree that the face cards and the number cards, your face cards over here, face cards and number cards are well mixed? So you have their eye focused on the face cards and number cards or on the suits or whatever. Okay, so you draw their attention away from the parity of the cards, whether it's even or on. Okay, so you, you need it alternating. Now it is true uh, with a deck of 52 cards, uh, you'll be able to alternate even and odd values, but you will have... Um, you'll have four remaining odd value cards, okay? So you, you can't alternate all 52 cards uh, because there's more odd value cards than even value cards, okay? That's for the simple reason, ace through 13, with those ends being odd, <laughs> ace and 13, uh, we're going to have four extra, okay? So you put them at the bottom, so we'll never get to them, okay? But you can still, you know, spread it and so forth. Okay, now what you do is the choices I gave you were genuine choices, okay? And I really would do what you asked me to do. So we're going to deal out two piles of eight, two piles of 16. Those can be dealt out in any order. So, you know, one, two, three, four. Let's just pretend we did it. So there's eight, <laughs> there's eight, and there's 16. And now we'll have four that won't go down, right? These won't be needed, okay? So eight, eight, 16, 16, okay even though they're probably not eight there. <laughs> okay. But each of these individually alternate in, in card parity. Okay, that's the key. They're, they're cyclic, okay? Um, now, the amazing thing that I've discovered just recently, and I'll show, you the, I'll show you a little summary of it. I'm almost reluctant to because it's such a powerful little result. And I give away everything on my channel for free. And I think that a lot of magicians are just scratching their head like, you're an idiot for giving all this away instead of packaging it and selling it somewhere. Um, but what I have discovered is if you have eight cards that alternate, you know, uh, like red, black, or even odd, some kind of alternating structure to the eight cards, alternating structure to a set of 16 cards, and some kind of alternating structure to a set of 32. Now, we didn't use 32, but you could. It's just you run out of cards pretty fast. So I decided to go with two of these and two of those. There's a little bit of symmetry there. Okay, so what I'm pointing out here is that this triangle deal, it will preserve alternating structures in all three of these cases. In all, you know, when you have powers of two cards, okay? Now, the only caveat, you're dealing them out into a triangle like this, right? 
And when I said, in fact, let's just mimic that right now. So, well, maybe not this one because it will take forever. Uh, this smaller packet. Okay, so uh, that's too many cards. Yeah, that would be the number. <laughs> Three in each plus two is eight. Okay. Okay, so let me just point out one subtlety you need to be aware of, and then you're off to the races. Okay, so in the case of eight cards, okay, it is true. Let me just slide these over. It is true that you can start, quote, gathering these anywhere. You can pick up any of the three packets first. Okay, that is absolutely true, and I did that. Um, or I gave you the choice, where would you like to start? Okay, so the only thing you have to be aware of, okay, so this is really important, actually, um, is that if you're going, if you're working with a packet of eight and you've done, done a triangle deal, you can start picking them up anywhere, but you need to stack in a counterclockwise direction, counterclockwise, you know, opposite of how the clock flows. Now, if you do that, when you're done stacking, it's still alternating, okay? And then what's really cool is when you go to a packet of 16 and you deal them out into these, you know, three piles, you'll be able to preserve that alternating structure by starting anywhere with your, you know, stacking. But this time you need to stack them in a clockwise direction. Okay, so counterclockwise for eight, clockwise for 16. Okay, and then as you might imagine, this pattern just alternates. Like the, here, you'd go back to counterclockwise for the picking up, and then 64 clockwise, and so forth. Okay, um, so that's the only subtlety to be aware of. Okay, so the way you sell that, well, first off, they're free to choose any starting place, and that's pretty powerful. So you say, oh, you want to start right here? Well, you can just, for the first one, you just go through and do it. You just Go in the counterclockwise direction. Don't even make a big deal of it. And then if you go to the 16 pile, one of the 16 piles next, you can say, well, let's shake things up. Let's see, I think we stacked counterclockwise last time. Why don't we stack clockwise, right? Just to mix things up. Okay, so you just, you have it play into the narrative that you're kind of randomly treating each of these, right? Okay, so I don't think that subtlety is too difficult to accommodate. Uh, but this is really a cool result, actually, I think, that alternating structures are preserved by a triangle deal in which you can start picking up anywhere you want in those three piles, but you just have to be aware of, okay, what power of two are you dealing with, and do you need to stack in counterclockwise direction or a clockwise direction? Anyway, that's the secret. None of this triangle dealing actually affected the alternating structure, right? It didn't affect it in any way. So they're kind of back to where they were at the beginning. And then of course, if this alternates uh, even odd, then you'll, you'll just be separating the even value cards from the odds. Okay, so that's, a, that's kind of the finale there. This is another great example of essentially sharing with you a mathematical principle and it's not particularly like dressed up, ready for a royal ball or something. But, uh, you you know, you could frame this differently or come up with a different narrative if you like. Uh, but I just thought I would share this with you since I kind of freely discovered it. Um, probably because of Warner Miller's pointing me in the direction of a triangle deal when, we, when we're dealing with Bessie sequences of order eight. So anyway, so thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.